You mentioned him there and someone you definitely will know very well. We've got to ask you about Finn Russell. As an attack coach, we obviously know that some of the ways he's portrayed in the media, which are maybe unfair. Johnny knows him very well, obviously. From an attack coach point of view, is he kind of perfect to work with because he's got almost all the tools that you need the leader of your attack to have? Uh, I think for, for me, um, more so his his off-field application to um, his analysis, his diligent um you know, he'll he'll come in, knock on the coach's door, he'll be in there, he'll be asking questions, he'll be suggesting things. Um I don't I don't know what's said and I don't know, you know, what 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 people think. I can only speak from the way he's been with me. We met in the summer just after I'd signed before the season started. We had a coffee. Um yeah, we talked about some of the things that he personally wanted to um, wanted to do. I think some of them were were obvious, and you know the way the way he's um, told the coaches what he wants to do this year and what he's done is fantastic. Um, you know, I think he's been he's been incredibly consistent for for racing, albeit we've not seen the sort of um, the flair that that Finn has showed in previous years. That also does tie in with with a little bit of the way that we want to play this year, which is agreed by by players and staff. Um, and, you know, he's been at the core of everything that we've done, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I'm happy for him because, yeah, you know, maybe he has come under a little bit of a little bit of flack, but internally, and we do focus on on what we're doing and we don't get too too dragged into what to what's said. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I can't speak highly enough of him. And then on the field, you know, he's he's always going to do two or three things that might not come off. But I think for the two or three things that might not come off, you're going to get seven or eight positive, really influential moments from Finn. And if, and if you look at him, he, you know, his communication, the way he talks to the youngsters, he's, you know, he manages, he manages that Latin French aspect. Well, and he's also got a group of foreigners that rely on him for translating. Um, you know, he sits at the back amongst the foreigners which is great because then I don't have to translate all the time. So he does a little bit. Of <laughs> but look, you know, yeah, you know, and it's not, it's not a case of me trying to, trying to talk him up. I, I generally mean that he's been fantastic for me personally coming into a new club. And I think he's done himself proud to date and hopefully it continues. And also you'll be delighted that he's now not involved because you'll have him through the international window for racing. So it's a positive for you guys. Yeah. But having, having, ha- having not been announced in the squad and you've been with him day to day, how has he taken that news? Like obviously, you talk about his analysis, the work he put. Has he just poured himself back into work and trying to get back into net result, play against Breathe? How is he taking it? His body language? How is he getting on? No, you you wouldn't you wouldn't really know. Um, uh, to you wouldn't know that he hasn't been picked. Um, you know, he turned up. We had a chat about it. We've had one conversation about it. Um, he he's at peace with it from from the, from from what I can understand. He's carried on training. He's played at the weekend. Um, I anticipate he'll be in the group this weekend against Brief. Um, you wouldn't know any different. I think he's, you know, he, he's really focused and he knows that um, by playing wide at the club, other things will happen. So, yeah, you you wouldn't really know. Um, body language, yeah, he's always, you know, kicking the ball at someone or he's, you know, he's got a little, <laughs> he's got a little, he's got a little blank going, a little joke going on somewhere. But, yeah, he's, um, you know, his, his demeanour, his body language is, is um, et à d'esprit, as we say here. Hasn't yeah. changed one bit, so you know. I think you know. Again, he's doing himself really proud in, in the ways, the way he's you know he's approached this season. Are we you shocked, Rory? Because the world seemed quite surprised, and presumably as a coaching group, you were planning to be without him for the next few weeks. Yeah. Again, again, oh, I, I I don't I don't really know um, what what Gregor or the guys were thinking. I I personally didn't have any contact. You know, there was no questions asked on. On, on how he's attacking, uh, you know, those those conversations I had um, uh, at sort of head coach level. So there might have been some conversations with Lauren, Lauren Tarver. Um, no, we, we've sort of just, just, just got on with it, really. And I think um, we've not wanted to, you know, jump up, jump up and down because we've got him here because we, you know, because it's, <laughs> he, he probably would have wanted um, to have represented this country. But you know he he's he's a key part of what we're, what we're trying to put in place this year. So, yeah, look, who knows? You know, sometimes there's there's clashes of um, you know character and form, and there's all sorts of different things that could be the reason why he's not playing. 
Um, but yeah, we're we're just incredibly happy to have him have him here still. And um, yeah, he's um, yeah. Yesterday he left his his attack notes um, upstairs uh, by the computers for me, and I worked on those today. And and that, that's that's the way he is. He's you you can't you couldn't ask for anything more. Sit seriously. Mate, he's a good egg, and that's the we were talking about it before we, we came on. But that's the infuriating bit for me as a Scottish rugby fan is like I want to see I want to see him there. I want to see him play, and it's not been for me again. You talk about form; his form has been good. Like his form, the games that I've watched, the games that I've commented on or worked at, like I've loved watching Finn play the past five, six, seven rounds of the top fourteen. He's been in good form, and the disappointing bit from my side is that it is this personality clash or something we can't get past management group and a performance group so that we can get them on the field and all drive standards together and move forward and perform as a Scottish side. That's the disappointing bit from my perspective. And we'll just, we'll never find out because behind closed doors, we won't know what's actually been said or what wires are there, or why they can't work together. But yeah. it's just, it's fundamentally disappointing for everyone that wants to watch Scotland take on Australia, New Zealand in this autumn nation series, because in my mind, anyway, you've got a better chance of winning with Finn on the field. And I think that's the sort of consensus, the general, the general view or the general rugby view is, and that's why it's disappointing. But in my mind, his form has been has been great with you guys. Yeah, well, he, you know, he's goal kicking there. He's had a couple of games where he's hundred percent kicked to kicked to fifty meter uh, penalty against La Rochelle to, to to, albeit we probably should have um, we probably we probably were in it to win down there, but you know, kicked a penalty. Um, and in the dying minutes, so to, to, to bring a defensive bonus point home, again, kick, kick some, hits another long-range penalty at the weekend. Defensively, I think he's been fantastic this year, one of probably the best defensive tens in the league. So, you know, if there was any ever a doubt around anything of that, um, I think to his disadvantage, he's just not had those sort of uh, mercurial moments that we have seen in, in the past. But, you know, the, the, the squad's changed. Uh, connections, um, relationships have changed in in and around the players that that are working with him. He's now maybe taken on a slightly different role that you know when before there would have been a, a you know a Kurtley, a Zebo, you know in and around you know those more experienced players. We played the first three games with, with with some young players, so you know his role was slightly different, and he might not have been getting you know the communication he normally gets with with some experience outside of him and. With that in mind, I think he adapted really well, and and he played so he played some some good rugby. He kept the ball in front of the forwards, etc. And it, you know, other things will happen over the course of the season, as you know. It's a marathon this league. It's um it's tough week to week. So hopefully, um, he can keep he can keep developing and uh, and you know enjoying it, and he's playing with a smile on his face. And let's take it away from Finn because you guys are both saying he's a good Edgar saying he's very diligent, very good. So this is not about Finn, but if you broaden it out as a coach, you mentioned there lots of stuff goes on behind closed doors that the wider public don't see. You must have had situations in the past where players haven't taken kindly to things that you've said, or there's been various clashes, but as a coach, how much is it incumbent on you to create an environment where someone that is super talented or or is obviously kind of one of the, as Johnny's saying, one of the best, I've made it about Finn again now without meaning to, but you know, one of the best <laughs> three in a position, just broadly speaking, is that your job as a coach to sort of create an environment that someone can work within, or is it just certain <clears throat> personalities that just doesn't work? Yeah, I think there, there's, there's so many different dynamics. You take the French, the French environment, there's, there's lots of players that have, have come here and they've been on form when Super Rugby or they've been on, you know, they've been playing really well with, I don't know, Wales or whoever, whoever England. And and sometimes just the dynamics and and the sort of the, the, it doesn't mix, it doesn't work. It doesn't mean to say that either one is wrong or um, I think the most important thing is that if you know you were, you, you were trying to create an environment where each player could grow. You were not trying to close them off and take options away from them. Um, and with, again, with Finn, for example, I feel that, you know, with Finn, um, engaging with him, giving him some autonomy, um, he feels part of the process, that he creates motivation. Um, he, he feels that he's got, um, you know, some, some say on the way we want to play. I think that's, that's positive. But then there could be a, a younger um, it could be a younger fly half who might need a little bit more guidance and he might need, you know, other experienced players outside of him, but still he's still calling the shot. So you still have to give him that that sort of freedom whilst um, maybe having a bit more of a handrail there for them to, to hold on to, um, you know, is key. Again, you know, 
you know, there's there's lots of different ways of managing managing people and managing players, isn't there? Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it is sort of that con- contextualization of right, what's the situation, where 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 are we at as a club, and and what players do we need? And I think recruitment and, and environment is key. But yeah, there's it's a million dollar question, I think personally. <laughs> 